My name is Kurt van Mensvoort and I'm an artist, scientist, designer, philosopher, writer, blogger, producer. I guess in the end I'm sort of an amateur. Say that investigating the strange and the beautiful is my, uh, my main interest. And one of the um, most important discoveries I made while investigating the strange and the beautiful is the discovery of uh, next nature. Um, and that's the topic I have been working on for the last few years and I'm working on full time now. We have to uh, reassess our image of nature. Um, many people have been working and are still working on uh, improving our relation with nature. But if you look carefully, then you notice that almost no one asks the, the more important question, I think, what is nature? What is our image of nature? How is that determined? Basically, much of what we think of as nature is, according to my view, in fact, culture. Uh, but then again, there's also this other story, which is that much of our uh, culture and technological uh, environment uh, right now becomes so complex, omnipresent and uncontrollable that we start to relate to it as a nature of its own. It's a different kind of nature, that's why we call it next nature. The difference between nature and culture, I think it's, it's still a relevant question. Um, because for centuries, people have thought of nature and culture as sep separate domains. And uh, this also has consequences, um, ethically, but also practically. Uh, it has all kinds of consequences. And also, if you track down the image of nature and of the relationship between nature and culture throughout history, you see that this ha has changed. Uh, in various times and places. Um, for instance, the, the Greek, they associated uh, nature with, uh, well, word like growth. That was, nature was the thing that grew. Uh, whereas the Romans, they uh, uh, understood nature more in terms of things that were born. And I think that's, that's quite a subtle but interesting difference. Um, I think right now in society, many people still have this nature-culture distinction as nature is that that's born and culture is the thing that's made. Um, so that's very much according to the Roman uh, view of, uh, of nature. But you see that's no longer valid because we are now living in a time in which the born and the made are completely fusing. But if we still want to make a distinction between nature and culture, which we can, then I would rather make a distinction between um, yeah, culture, the things we control, and nature, the domain that's autonomous, that's, uh, that's beyond our control. So then you see part of what we used to call nature is still nature. For instance, the sun, the sun so that's still nature. It's born, but it's also beyond our control. Um, but something like the financial system, there it becomes very interesting because it's not born, it has been made, but it is, we notice that it's slipping beyond our control. At that moment, you start to relate to it as a natural force. The next nature is real nature. Uh, because in the end, I think nature is so much more, so much bigger than, than us. Nature is still um, a very uh, dominant force. It's just that um, it's, it's also s that strong that uh, we will never be able to, to, to entirely uh, cultivate it or even know it, I think. And uh, I, I very much like the quote of an ancient Greek uh, philosopher who said, nature loves to hide itself. So every time that we uh, people think that we, uh, we have controlled nature and we, we put it down and we think now we have fixed nature and we can live without nature, uh, then always um, it shows itself in a in a different domain, in a different uh, location. So we continue 
this relation uh, with nature. And as we are doing this also, yeah, nature changes along with us. Mankind is, uh, is technological by nature. Already the first time that we threw, threw a, a stick to an animal, that was a technique, that was a technology. So, um, and to deny uh, the fact that we are technological by nature, uh, that's also denying part of mankind. Na ons de mens, um, yeah, it's, it's a weird title after us, the human, because it assumes that perhaps we're not human at this moment. And uh, it's sort of a provocation, but it might also be very true, because the standard way of thinking and talking about uh, our future as people is that many people are worried that we might not be human anymore in the future. Might be, but uh, it could also be that we are already no longer human today, and maybe already for a long time um, not human anymore. And the notion of uh, na ons de mens, or after us the human, is that um, we should also think of how we can become human again. And that's not, that, that doesn't uh, relate to going back to nature, but more, it's more about going forward to nature. Always when we move forward, we have to find this, this balance between, yeah, staying in a, true to our human nature, but also realizing that this human nature is evolving and that it's uh, changing. And I think sometimes we, uh, we fall down and then, uh, uh, we, for instance, live in a, in a society in which there are so many alien technologies around us that they, uh, that our human nature is, uh, is, is uh, numbed. Um, but I, I'm hopeful and I think that it's also possible to invent technologies that amplify and uh, facilitate our human nature. And those are the humane technologies uh, that we need, that we, uh, so that we can uh, evolve, move forward in the, towards the future with an open mind and an open uh, view. Uh, change will happen, but we will still be human, or even more human than we were maybe at certain other moments.